Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, so there will be three lectures on uh, Brahma Sputa Siddhanta or Brahma Gupta. So, two lectures will be delivered by me. This is the first part. So, this is gives an outline. I will give just an introduction about uh, Brahma Gupta, then 20 logistics that he talks about, especially cube, cube root, I will deal a little bit. Then, rule of proportion, then mixtures, interest calculations. So, then arithmetic and uh, geometric progressions. Then uh, geometry, essentially some plane figures, triangles, right triangles and quadrilaterals. Okay. Brahma Gupta is described as Ganaka Chakra Chudamani, jewel among the circle of mathematicians by Bhaskara II. He was held in high esteem by most of the astronomer mathematicians in India who followed him. He holds a remarkable place in the history of Eastern civilization. It was from his works, his works that Arabs learnt astronomy before they became acquainted with Ptolemy. See, for instance, Brahma Sputa Siddhanta in some forum went to uh, Arabia, I mean Arab speaking countries and it was translated as Sindh Hin. And similarly, one more work of him, uh, Khanda Kardika also was translated as Al Arkant and that had a profound influence on development of mathematics in uh, the Islamic Arab uh, region. He was born in uh, 599 common, uh, 98 common era and he composed his Brahma Sputa Siddhanta in 24 chapters and a total of 1008 verses in uh, uh, common era 628. Uh, there is a very elaborate commentary on that on this work by Prutudaka Swami around uh, uh, about uh, two and a half centuries later. So, you can see that you know is a um, Ari Bhatia has only 121 verses, this is a much more elaborate work. Earlier as you would have seen from Ari Bhatia, mathematics also is a part of the astronomy text. Brahma Gupta also follow the same pattern. The two chapters on essentially on uh, mathematics here, one an arithmetic which includes actually geometry and other on uh, algebra. And of course, as Professor M. D. Srinivas pointed out, uh, it has a the chapter on Chandras also. This lecture and the next one deal with arithmetic. So, in the arithmetic, he talks about uh, 20 logistics addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, square, square root, cube, cube root. There are some six rules of reduction of fractions. Then rule of proportions, rule of 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11 and border and what he calls 8 determinations, mixture, progression, plane figures, excavations, stacks, saw, mound and shadow. So, that is how we divide it. So, elementary operations, most of the most elementary operations he will discuss only briefly as if you know people are expected to know already and he deals first with fractions reducing them to a common denominator etcetera and multiplications and uh, divisions. Then when he talks about cube, I mean I will not discuss all the operations in detail. When he talks about cube, it is based on the formula a plus b whole cube is equal to a cube plus 3 a squared b plus 3 a b squared plus b cube and uh, I will talk about cube root. Uh, briefly, cube root extraction is discussed in verse 7, which is the same procedure as in Aribatiya, which uh, Professor Ram Subramaniam has uh, dealt with in great detail. <coughs> but anyway, for completion, I will say that Chedo Ghana Vitiyad Ghana Mula Krutis Stri Sanguna Sakrutihi Shodhya Tripurva Ganita Prathamad Ganato Ghano Mulam. The translation is divisor for the second non cubic digit. He strives the square of the cube root, the square root of the quotient multiplied by 3 and by the preceding must be subtracted from the next non cubic 
and the cube from the cubic digit uh, that, that is the root which has already been found. So, anyway it has been discussed in great detail. So, just like for square root you divide into varga and avarga, here you are dividing into groups of 3, my notation is slightly different from Ram Subramanian, but it is the same thing. In fact, the example is essentially the same thing. So, the number is written as C, C1, uh, N2, N1, C, N2, N1 like that C. So, groups of 3 and C is the cubic term and N1 is the first non-cubic term and N2 is the second non-cubic. So, groups of uh, 3 are uh, there. For example, in this 1771521, so you write it as 1 is a C, 7, uh, five, you start from the right actually, right? 1 is C, 2 is N1, 5 is N2 and so on. So, when you do the, I do not have to explain, already it has been, <laughs> the same example has been done. So, I will uh, skip the you know, details, you just have to, you know, you have to first, uh, the, the first cubic term, you take the, uh, the term which is, you know, some term which is you know whose cube is less than that. So, of course, here only q c is 1, but sometimes it may be as many as 3 digits. Okay. So, c the last c you know left, here it is 1 or this thing you know if single digit of course, it has to be only 1 or 2, the cube root will be 1 or 2 that first digit of the cube root. It may be some 998. So, then you have to that uh, the first digit of the cube root will be 9. So, like that so, and then you proceed as you said, you know, you divide the first, you uh, divide by the, uh, sorry, subtract the uh, cube root of the first digit, the cube of the first digit and then divide by 3 into square of that and um, then uh, you subtract and the 3 into uh, the first, dig uh, first digit of the cube root and whatever quotient you have got, you take the square of that and that you subtract and so on. And the rationale for that also has been explained in great detail. <coughs> okay. Now, of course, if you if you have perfect cubes, of course, it is very simple to teach, but what do you do if you do not have perfect cubes? It is not stated here, but implicit in later text is that you know essentially multiplies by you know powers of 10 cube like 1000 or 1000 squared and all that. And similarly, the cube root is correspondingly divided by 10 or 10 squared and so on. So, that is what the later some of the later text um, discuss. Okay, so I don't have to go more about this uh, cube root. So then he talks about the rule of proportion is a very important thing. Trirashika, and of course generalizations have got to five, seven, nine, etc. So the problem is suppose you have a pramana A and the pramana phala is B, then what is the phala for some ichha C? So, C is Icha, then Icha Phala is what? Okay. So, the direct rule of 3 will give D is equal to C into B by A. Okay. So, you take the Pramana Phala, then divide by the Pramana and then multiply by the <coughs> Icha. But sometimes you have inverse rule of 3. So, then in that case, you have to the numerator, what you will get is the uh, Pramana and denominator you get the Icha. So, he gives an example, for instance, gives an example, a person gives away 108 cows in 3 days, how many does he bestow in a year and a month? That is 390 days, year is taken to be 360, month is 30. So, here it is a clearly a direct rule. So, the uh, first is the B is 108, the Pramana Phala, the Pramana is 3 and the Icha is 390. So, 390 by 3 into 108. So, this is the answer. Now, inverse rule, Sutudaka uh, in his commentary has given these examples. The measure of a certain quantity is equal to 10 units, that is B, when the unit is 3 and a half P, where P is some fundamental unit. What is the measure when the unit is 5 and a half is equal to 11 by 2 p with the which is c. See here pramana the first unit is 3 and a half and pramana phala is the first measure which is 10, icha the second unit is 5 and a half. So, we have to find out the icha phala the second measure. 
So, we have to use the inverse rule a by c into b to obtain the ichcha phala. So, because when the unit is large, the number of uh, these things will be uh, what you get is less, right. I mean, if you have some length, the number of inches is uh, much more than the number of feet. So, it is uh, that is the unit is more than the uh, what you get the measure will be measurement will be less. So, now for the uh, proportions involving more quantities, you know, he gives an example the price of 100 bricks, uh, bricks of uh, with the length, thickness and breadth respectively are 16, 8 and 10 is settled in 6 dinars. We have received a 100,000 of other bricks, a quarter less in every dimension, say what we ought to follow. So, the uh, length, thickness and breadth are 16, 8 and 10 and the price is 6, okay. then the for 100,000 bricks, what is the amount? Okay, where this um, each of these dimension is one quarter less. Okay, 16 becomes 12. So the length is 12 instead of 16. The thickness is 6 instead of 8, and the breadth is 30 by 4 instead of 10. So you are dividing by 3 by 4. So then in that case, the answer will be. So in the direct rule of proportion, 12 by 16 into 6 by 8 into 30 by 4 into 10. So, 100,000 by 100 and the original price for 100 for these dimension was 6. So, I have to multiply all these things and uh, the final answer is 2531 1 by 4. One can go on like this with examples involving rule of proportions both direct and inverse. Indeed, the text and the commentary have many more examples. So next in the section 2, Brahmagupta takes up problems involving mixtures. So for instance, uh, to give you an example, the 15th verse will give a problem involving a calculation of interest in financial transactions. Remember that interest is calculated in, uh, uh, in is mentioned in Aryabhatiya also. So the what is discussed in this verse is the following, that the interest and the principal P for a time T0 be I 0. This interest the I 0 is lent out at the same rate for further time t. Let the interest on this be I 1. So, at the time of t 1, end of t 1, the amount owed by the second borrower is I 0 plus I 1, this is A 1. So, when we are given A 1 and uh, uh, P and T 0, you have to find out I 0. So, what I am saying is that you know, see. The first borrower has received an amount principal P and for time t is equal to t 0, the interest for that is I 0. Now, a second borrower receives an amount I 0, borrows an amount I 0 from the first borrower, borrower at the same interest and suppose after t 1, the interest for this amount I 0 is I 1. So, now what is given is A 1 is equal to I 0 plus I 1. So, this is the amount which the second borrower owes to the first borrower after time T 1. So, that is principal plus interest. So, we have to find from this I 0 and I 1 separately. Parakala Hruto Vidhadya Mishra Vadhat Anyardha Kruti Yutat Padam Anyardhena Pramana Phalam. The translation is the product of the time and principle divided by the further time is pi z down from the product of the one by the mixed amount added to the square of half the other, extract the square root. That root less half the second is the interest of the principle. So, if I express it in uh, uh, mathematically, it will be. Um, clearer. So, I 0 the expression given is that I 0 is minus P T 0 by T 1 plus square root of this quantity <coughs> where A 1 is I 0 plus I 1 and which is I 0 you see, but I 1 see for interest the principal P 
and for time t0 the interest is i0. So, for principal i0 for time t1 the uh, interest is this. So, i1 is i0 into i0 by p into t1 by t0. So, this is the rule of 5 we are doing. So, this is a1 and a1 is given. So, i0 squared into t1 by p t0 plus i0 is a1. So, this is the equation. So, you see that there is a quadratic equation coming. So, the quadratic equation the square the solution is given by this. So, because the solution of the quadratic equation this kind of a thing is even discussed in Arabati not for this problem, but in the context of progressions. So, the, the solution he is giving. So, which is correct. So, of course, there is another root as we know that there it has got two roots, but here it is you know not meaningful the second root is not meaningful. So, he does not discuss it and an example is given in the commentary. So, suppose p is 500 t 0 is sorry p is 500 t 0 is 4 months t 1 is 10 months then mixed amount is 78. Okay, what the second borrower has to return to the first borrower that is the amount he borrowed plus the interest on that that is 78. Then what is the interest I 0 on P for 4 months? So, clearly using this formula we get 60. So, already some sophistication has come. So, next he talks about this is all Vavahara Ganita you know which will be useful for ordinary transactions you know in day to day life. For instance, verse 16 says, Prakshepa yoga hrutaya labdhya prakshepaka guna labaha unadi kotaraha tad yutonaya saphala muna vitam. The contributions taken into the profit divided by the sum of the contributions or the several gains, or if there be subtractive or additive differences, with the profit increased or diminished by the differences and the product thus has the corresponding differences subtracted or added. Again it is easier to discuss it you know using mathematics this thing you know with uh, the mathematical notation. The first rule he says, says you know that suppose for some transaction uh, 1, 2, 3 etcetera are contributing C1, C2 etcetera and suppose the profit gain is you know total uh, profit gained is P then how do you distribute it among 1, 2 etcetera. Okay. So, then this, well, that the gains which has to be uh, enjoyed by each of these people. So, that let there be P 1, P 2 etcetera. Then clearly P i will be equal to C i by C into P and the second rule says it is a it goes a little more complicated. So, suppose you are not given you know the total gain P, but total gain plus some quantity. Okay. Suppose that is how the problem is posed. So, then in that case similarly your p i or to p prime i is p i plus a you define it like this and the total this this p prime will be p plus a which is this sigma p i plus sigma a i. Then suppose p prime is given. So, then find p is equal to p prime minus a and from p you get t i by c into p and p prime i is p i plus a. If you discuss an example probably it will be clear. Four colleges containing an equal number of pupils were invited to partake of a feast. One fifth, half, one third and one fourth came from the respective colleges to the feast and added to one, two, three, four they were found to amount to 87. So, then you have to find out the various numbers of course, even that you know full statement of the problem is sometimes not given. So, obviously, this is what you have to find. So, here the C 1, C 2, C 3, C 4 are in the ratio it is given 1 by 5 into is to 1 is 1 by 2 is to 1 by 3 is to 1 by 4. So, 12 is to 30 is to 20 is to 15. So, the C the total will be 77, but what is given is not that. So, it is given a 1 is 1, a 2 is equal to 2, a 3 is equal to 3, a 4 is equal to 4. So, a is 10 and this added quantity is total added quantity is 10. So, then p prime is you know 
whatever this uh, p plus a so that is 87 we take it as 87 and then p will be 77 because the p 87 is what is given and a is 10 so your p will be p prime minus a will be 77 and then from 77 you get this p a is c i by c into p so p 1 is 12 by 77 into 77 that is 12 p 2 is 30 so what is coming here is this you know this contribution 12 30 20 15 right so those are the corresponding quantities you have to multiply so you get p 2 is equal to 30 p 3 is equal to 20 p 4 is equal to 50 so this is the number of students who have come from the various colleges okay now he goes to the arithmetic progression so in the arithmetic progression it is essentially the result is the same as in arabatia so the result is uh, the sum of the arithmetic progression is given as parameka hina muttara gunitam samyukta madinantya ghanam adi utantya ghanardham madhya ghanam padagunam gunitam the period less 1 multiplied by the common difference being added to the first term is the amount of the last half the sum of the last and first terms is the mean amount which multiplied by the period is the sum of the whole period means a number of terms and naturally the average of these you know quantities in the arithmetic these things it is first 10 last divided by 2 right so that is the uh, a mean amount so then what is given is so you got the arithmetic progression a a plus d a plus 2d etc a plus n minus 1d so this is the arithmetic progression then the sum is given by a plus so this is the first term then the last term you add them then divide by 2 then multiply by the number of terms so n a plus n into n minus 1 into d by 2 so where the so this is the average this one is the average so geometrical progression is dealt with in the commentary brahma sputta siddhanta itself doesn't discuss it in the 12th chapter so for finding the sum of a series the increasing two fold or three fold etc you have the geometrical progression where suppose the the factor is r so then first time is a then a ar ar squared etc ar to the power of n minus 1 if the number of terms is n so then the sum is a is the initial term or is the multiplier then the sum is a plus ar plus ar squared etc plus a r to the to the power of n minus 1 so is a into r to the power of n minus 1 by r minus 1 so to find r to the power of n the traditional procedure as in chandra's text is given so what is done is he stated is at the various stages in the commentary if the number is odd subtract 1 and write m if the number is even divide by 2 and write s go on till you exhaust obtain 1 below that is r and then to find r to the power of n multiply by r whenever there is m and square the quantity when it is s so this was uh, nicely explained by professor shinivas yesterday so this is the optimal method of uh, finding the nth power of a number see suppose the number of terms is 17 so then 70 is an odd number so 17 minus 1 16 so you write m so then 16 is divided by 2 is divisible by 2 8 so you write s 8 is divisible by 2 is 4 so you write s and 4 is divisible by 2 so 2 you write s and 2 is divisible by 2 is 1 s so you have got 1 and then below this you stop okay r so now you go to the next column you start with r so whenever there is s you write square it and whenever there is m you multiply by r so if you start with r at the bottom now you are going reverse so r next is s so r square so next is again is s so r to the power of 4 the next again is s r to the power of 8 next is r to the power of 16 and then last is m so you have to multiply by r so r to the power of 70 so that is what it does okay so the reason is clear when one is subtracting one one is essentially dividing by r and one is when one is dividing by two one is finding the square root so go on to you till get one finally multiplier is r naturally to obtain r to the power of n you do have to do have to do it in the reverse order 
So, you have to square it and multiply it instead of dividing and uh, this thing right. So, essentially the sum is this a into r to the power of after finding r to the power of n this is the sum a into r to the power of n minus 1 by r, to r minus 1. So, this quantity minus 1 into initial term divided by multiplier minus 1 ok. So, we come back to the arithmetic progression the number of terms is given again it is the result which is given in R Bhatia, so which probably Professor Ram Subramanian will explain in greater detail. So, you clearly you, are, you had seen earlier the expression for S right. So, S is this, so S is quadratic in R. So, if you know N, A and D you can find S, but suppose you know S, D and A to find N clearly it is a quadratic equation. So, so, the solution is uh, first given by Aribatia in Aribatia. So, here he is giving the same thing. So, which is uh, caused in this verse Uttara Hina Dvigunadi Vishesha Vargam Ganotara the Ganotara Ashtavade Takshipya Padam Sheshonam Dvigunotara Hurtam Gachaha. So, this is uh, clear enough. Again, <coughs> one talked about suppose you, uh, you do the sum then sum of sums you take ok. So, first sum is 1 plus the first sum is the then sum of the first n integers 1 plus n so it is n into n plus 1 by 2 the sum of sums sum of sums. So, that is you take r into r plus 1 by 2 that you sum from 1 to n and that is given by sum into period plus 2 period is you remember is uh, n. So, sum itself is n into n plus 1 by 2. So, this sum is n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 divided by 2 into 3. Generalization of that will be uh, given by uh, Narayana Pandita later, but uh, this sum of sums is you know they stop here Aryabhatiya and uh, Brahmaspati Siddhanta. And similarly for sum of squares and sum of cubes the results are the same as in Aryabhatiya, so which are uh, given here. So, now we will go to some geometry. So, where he discusses triangles and quadrilaterals in some detail and uh, the first he will give the area of the uh, uh, this thing um, triangles and quadrilateral. The product of half the sides and counter sides is the gross area of triangle and tetragon which is essentially quadrilateral. Half the sum of the sides set down 4 times and severally lessened by the sides being multiplied together the square root of the product is the exact area. So, here he first gives some approximate results which may be useful at times and then he will give the exact result. So, if you have a quadrilateral like this, so with sides a, b, c, d, so then the s is the semi perimeter is half the sum of sides is a plus b plus c plus d by 2. The gross area is taken to be a plus d by 2 into b plus c by 2 is called approximate area and the exact area is given by this expression square root of s minus a into s minus b into s minus c into s minus d and the expression for the exact area as you would have as was remarked earlier is a correct only for a cyclic quadrilateral it is not true for a general quadrilateral, but this result is of course valid cyclic quadrilateral any square rectangle isosceles trapezia is all <coughs> for all them this uh, result will be exact. So, now the proof is not given in uh, the commentary or uh, um, much later only it will come in uh, Ganita Yukti Bhasha of Jaisa Deva which will be discussed later on the very you know, elaborate proof of this result is given. Of course, this for the quadrilateral cyclic quadrilateral for the triangle you take one side to be 0. So, then you will get the result for the and for triangle it is always true because any tri triangle is cyclic because any triangle you can always you know have a circle which is you know going through all the vertices. So, then he will talk about the abhada the per base and perpendicular in a triangle. So, this is an interesting thing which um, I will discuss. Bhujakrutyantara bhuhruta hina yutha bhut vibhajita bhadhe swabada vargonat bhuja bhujavargat mulam avalambaha. 
So, the difference of the squares of the sides being divided by the base, the quotient is added to and subtracted from the base, the sum and the remainder divided by 2 are the segments and the square root extracted from the difference of the side of its corresponding base is a perpendicular. So, again um, it is much easier to explain with the diagram and uh, the notation. So, here A B C is a arbitrary triangle. So, A is the base C and B are the sides. Okay. So, then you draw a perpendicular from A to the base B C. So, A D is the perpendicular. So, then segments this abadha is you know B D and C D these are the segments. Okay. So, then he is giving the expression for the segments C D and, and B D and the perpendicular in terms of the sides. So, the segments are C D is equal to A plus B squared minus C squared by A whole thing divided by 2 and B D is this. Okay. So, we can uh, easily prove it. So, because B D squared for instance is uh, A B squared minus A D squared. So, C squared minus A D squared which is written as <coughs> and uh, A D squared it is again it is um, uh, C D squared minus uh, a d square, uh, a d squared is again b squared minus c d squared. So, finally, you get c d squared minus b d squared is equal to b squared minus c squared or c d minus b d into c d plus b d is b squared minus c squared, but c d plus b d is equal to b c is equal to a. So, then and c d minus b d we have found to be b squared minus c squared by a. So, finally, this uh, c d and b d are found from these two equations. So, it is a plus b squared minus c squared by a whole thing divided by 2 and a minus b squared minus c squared by a whole divided by 2 as is how it is stated and a d is you know you can found either from a d you know c square root of c squared minus this segment square or this side squared minus the corresponding segment square square root of that. So, all the theorems uh, things uh, results are following from the theorem of the right triangle. So, then for an isosceles trapezium he is giving a result avishama chaturashtra bhuja prati bhuja vada yoho yute padam karanaha karana kruti buhu mukha yuti dala vargona padam lambaha. So, in any triangle again I think instead of reading out the translation what I am I uh, will explain it straight away. So, you have an what he does not say is isosceles trapezium, but it is actually applicable only to an isosceles trapezium you see where the, the two flanks are equal. So, here C D is the base, A B is the summit. So, A D and C B, B C are the diagonals. So, for an isosceles trapezium clearly they are equal. So, and then he gives A D squared, we can find that A D squared is A F squared plus F D squared. And so on, it is just simple application of uh, uh, these results and uh, the right triangle uh, theorem, the so called Pythagoras theorem. So, A D finally, you get A D is equal to B C is square root of A C into B D plus A B into C D. So, it is just a matter of you know doing a few steps with the and A F square, there is a lumba, right. So, the perpendicular that A F square is given by diagonal square minus base plus summit by 2 whole square okay. because you have found the diagonal AD you square it <coughs> and then take the base plus summit by 2 whole square. So, that is the. So, then it is interesting that all these after giving all these results then it comes to the theorem of the right triangle the so called Pythagoras theorem. So, probably it should be called the Bodha in a theorem in whatever way in a, everybody has strong views on this. And uh, it is known that most of the civilizations knew about Pythagoras theorem before Pythagoras that is for certain. <laughs> so, he says he says that in a Karna Krute he Koti Krutam Vishodhya Moolam Bujo Bujasya Krutim Proksha Padam Koti Bahu Kruti Uti Padam Karna. Subtracting the square of the upright from the square of the diagonal the square root of the remainder is the side or subtracting the square of the side the root of the remainder is the upright and the root of the sum of the squares of the upright and the side is the diagonal. So, you are expressing it in this thing you know either you get the side from 
side is there, upright is there, is diagonal. So, side is diagonal is found from upright and side or side is found from upright and diagonal and so on, but um, the essential result is diagonal square is upright square plus square square. So, then he talks about the segments of the diagonal and the perpendicular. So, again I will go state the, so this is the verse Karna yuta urdhva adara khande karnava lamba yogeva swabade swayuti swayuti hrute vidha putak karna lamba ka guni. So, this is the result and the translation is this. Instead of that uh, uh, writing, reading out the translation, I am telling what he is trying to say. So, this is in a trapezium like this. Okay. So, the diagonals are intersecting at i. From the, uh, the point of the intersection, you drop a perpendicular. Okay. So, then essentially to find the segments a i and i d okay, etcetera from the diagonal and the segments and so on. Okay. So, for instance, i d is given by uh, g d into a d by d f. Okay. So, that is corresponding segment of the base into diagonal divided by complement of segment. So, it is all rule of proportion similar using similar triangles. So, that is what he is doing, but actually this is true not only when i is at the intersection for any other point also it is true. So, if you have i prime okay, essentially if you want to find i prime d, i prime d will be equal to g prime d into a d by <coughs> instead of you know you will have this uh, uh, g prime d and a d by a f. So, the just the rule of proportion and similarly perpendicular you know i g and i prime g prime. So, these are the portions of the perpendicular you can say this is the real perpendicular and now you are getting some portions you know when you drop perpendicular from some arbitrary points. So, they are all given by the rule of proportion. Okay. So, now he goes to the circum radius of a triangle and a cyclic quadrilateral. So, the result is the diagonal of a quadrilateral other than a general one being multiplied by the flank and divided by twice the perpendicular is a central line that is a circum radius. So, this is the earlier uh, verse part of the verse uh, 26 in the chapter uh, uh, 12. Then the the other thing is the next verse gives for the circum radius of a triangle. So, that is Tribujasya Vado Bhujayoho Dvigunita Dala Dvigunita Lambo Dhruto Hrudaya Rajuhu Sri Chaturbuja Hrudaya Dvigunam Vahivruta Vishkambaha. So, this is the. So, what he is saying is the product of the two sides of a triangle divided by twice the perpendicular is the central line and the double of this is the diameter of the exterior circle. So, I will take this see for instance this is a uh, a b c is a triangle and uh, a b c d prime is the cyclic quadrilateral. Okay. So, both of them I am giving in the same figure. So, you have to find the circum radius. So, what you do is I mean let us let O be the center of the circle. Okay. You draw the perpendicular a d from a to this uh, side b c. So, call it as p. So, the sides of the triangle you know a b is c, a c is b. Okay. So, we take up you know the triangle thing comes later, but it is easier to handle. So, here the side uh, you have to find out the circum radius right, AF. So, what you do is essentially you um, this uh, line A from O you, you know you just go up to F where it touches the circle then you know join this. Okay. So, then we know that this angle will be equal to this angle A B C is equal to A F C. So, because they are standing on the same base, so in the same portion of the circle so, they will be equal. So, then the triangles and this angle A C F, you know that this will be a semicircle. So, A C F will be 
essentially 90 degrees of course he does not give this I am giving the uh, this thing. So essentially A B D so triangle A B D and A C F these triangles will be similar okay. So because this angle will be equal to this angle and essentially this angle will be equal to this angle okay. So then from this, this thing you get a b by a d will be equal to a f by a c. So, a b divided by a d is equal to a c by a f by a c. So, c by p is 2 r by b. So, r is b into c divided by 2 p. So, product of sides divided by 2 into perpendicular. So, the circumradius I think this is the first time that he has uh, it has been got. It has been proved again it is proved in Yukti Basha which will be discussed later. Of course, the simpler is my circumradius all this you know the diagonals etc are taken up together in Yukti Basha in one this thing. So, it will come. Now, for a cyclic quadrilateral so again you know this A B C D prime it should not it not be D is D prime A B C D prime is a cyclic quadrilateral. So, here A C is B is a diagonal okay, and uh, A D is equal to P is the perpendicular okay. So, you make use of this portion triangular portion of the uh, cyclic quadrilateral okay in A B C D prime you take this. So, C into B the two sides will be of this triangle will be C that is one of the sides of the quadrilateral and B which is the diagonal of the cyclic quadrilateral. So, then this will be equal to B C is equal to diagonal into plank flank okay divided by by the perpendicular because the perpendicular has been found right using the earlier result how to find out the perpendiculars and segments. So, using that so you get the result okay. okay I think I will stop here thank you. We were uh, trying to find out the radius. No? Uh, radius, yes. But before that is shown, uh, how do you get the geometrical construction? Which one? Uh, this one, right? Yeah. First of all, the proof is not given in the text of the commentary, and I am giving a modern proof. See, here the aim is to find the circumradius without knowing it, how does one locate the center? So, we do not know the location of the center of the circle O to start with. We know that the circle passes through the vertices of the triangle and we draw it right. Let O be its center I mean though we do not know its location then you draw the diameter passing through A and the center O and carry on with the proof for finding the circumradius. The expression for the circumradius does not involve the knowledge of the location in the center. So, the proof is okay. Sir, yeah. uh, you said uh, uh, Brahmaspada Siddhanta was uh, what uh, what went to the Arabs uh, until they followed. One of the texts, yeah. Uh, until they followed Ptolemy. No, 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 after that they followed, you know, much later. Much, and much later they followed Ptolemy. Yes. But this. Ptolemy was not Ptolemy before Brahmagupta, so then. No, Ptolemy was before Brahmagupta, right? But you know, this it so happened that earlier phase in the Islamic Arabic region, you see, they were in for more influenced by the Indian mathematics. Indian arithmetic, algebra, geometry, and all that. You know, as Professor M. D. Shin was also men mentioned yesterday. You know, this all queries me, and he wrote a book and things like that. I mean, though Ptolemy was there, he had not read them somehow, because probably they, you know, the in India was nearer, and Indian influence was very quite a widespread. You know, not only Islamic Arabic countries, but also China and others had gone. So it had gone gone in some natural course, and they received the Greek wisdom a little later. Any other. So, it is mostly basically they are all you know uh, the results which can be taught to uh, in a high school uh, level uh, this thing. If I much of the high school level mathematics I can say is that you know mostly Indian kind of a thing geometry or arithmetic and algebra mostly which was developed first in India. And of course, we have some additions and all that you know later. Is the cyclic uh, 
I'm not sure about that. Must be. Are know. these results in what we hear is Euclid's work? Not know? in Euclid. Probably, I think it is. Uh, I think it is given in Apollonius uh, something like that. It's cyclic quadrilateral. So I'm not sure. Probably somebody else may comment on that. Diagonal result is proved much later in 17th century. Hmm. Till then, it's not. Diagonal theory. I'm coming to that in the next lecture. Okay. The references are given here. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>